Hi, so today I am going to do a new product release from a company that um, I've been watching for a little while. And as of Monday, it was March 24th of 2014, a company called LPG Tech released a brand new product. And I'm going to do a video about it and my initial interpretations. Um, this was something that I've been waiting for many years for somebody to finally put something together. And um, I'm proud to say that I'm the first person in the United States that has purchased it, has received it. And I'm going to be the first one to install it here in the United States. And you guys are going to be the first people who watch it. Um, here in the United States. So I'm going to go through with what it is. Um, this is the box that you receive. Uh, this product is a V8 kit. Uh, it is called a LPG Tech um, 328 OBD. So this is what she looks like. So you open up the box and this is what you receive. This is the Tech 328 OBD controller. Um, this is a LPG or CNG ECU brain. Um, this is brand new. This has got a lot of really cool things in it. I'll go through that in a minute. Uh, now this is a tech level sensor that they're starting to include. Um, this is for propane tanks. This isn't going to work for CNG. So I'll put this on eBay, but that is something you get for propane. You get a sticker, it's a nice gel coat sticker. I'll probably put this in the inside of my vehicle. Um, you get two filters, these are just basic filters. Uh, the filter media that's inside of this is a good filter media, but I have a video about why not to use these. But if you're going to get started, this is, they're good filters. Uh, looks like you get a parts bag. Let's open up this parts bag in here. So this is something new that um, is very, very requested now, and it's becoming an industry standard. And that is a direct quick plug-in. Um, Polish kits are known to make you solder in the back side of the wires that go to this connection switch which makes uh, replacement or moving it from one vehicle to the next very, very difficult and very, very painful. Uh, it attaches with this 3M based uh, double-sided tape here. Um, I really like these type of sensors. Uh, this is an advanced sensor though. It does have a check engine light here and it, it does have your status indicator with your level indicator. And there's also a, the buzzer is inside of this now. It is not uh, external unit. So uh, that's something that you should know. Make that really nice and easy. Um, they gave you your temperature sensor. This is for the reducer. And yeah, it does not have connectors for the, the, uh, the sensor, which in my opinion is I don't really like that. But this is a universal kit, so you can put this on a, um, any kind of product. I'm going to be seeing what this fits. But the thing is, when you receive this, there is a uh, setting inside of the, the software that is already pre-calibrated for this, so you won't have to wonder what sensor you're using. It's already there. That's why they're giving you this. And then they give you, it looks like this little um, vacuum port, and this would be for uh, the next thing I show you. This is something I really, really like. Um, out of any of the kits, um, this is just, this, this not only will save you time, but it'll save you money in multiple ways. For one, uh, this is the new PTS-01 map sensor, temperature sensor, and uh, your vacuum sensor as well um, for, your, for your map sensor. Uh, this is all in one, so what this is gonna do is this is going to be installed in line of your pressure line 
after your fill filter, that way the sensor that's in here stays clean. Um, what makes this really nice is the temperature sensor is already pre-calibrated in this for this ECU specifically. So you're going to have perfect temperature in your gas line from the get-go. And you won't have to worry about if you're choosing the right sensor, if the high or the low temperatures are correct. It's already done for you. And you know what, if there is a problem with the sensor later on or it breaks or something, um, you can go to their website and just buy this and just plug it right back in. Um, it, really really easy you don't have to disassemble anything um, it'll make instead of having to worry about um, where you're going to run your extra lines for your temperature sensor and your vacuum port um, and how you're going to integrate it into your system uh, this just simplifies everything for you and makes it all into one and uh, I'll show you that later what I'm talking about okay now the harness apparently they redesigned this harness it's a new updated harness. Um, I haven't opened this part up yet, but already I can see that there is a uh, very nice fuse holder built in um, for the positive. And for, let's see, that one's going to be your switch, and one of them is going to be your constant. Uh, the ground is already pre terminated with a ground terminal already on it, so that's nice. Um, you know what I like about the Polish kits? Uh, when you when you get the Polish kits, you can tell the difference between them because uh, the Polish use a cotton wrap electrical tape. That's a, one way you can determine when you pop it out of a vehicle if it's a Polish kit. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I haven't seen one from Italy that's wrapped in this cloth electrical tape. Uh, they're kind of proud of it whenever I talk to them. Um, let's see. So your injectors are numbered. There is a tag clipped onto them for the numbering of them. Uh, these here are going to be your natural gas or propane injector plugs. And it looks like there's where your MAP sensor plugs in. So, like a nice set. Uh, for one, this is going to save you time. This To make this look professional, um, to make sure these connections are tight and solid. One thing, this would hurt their company reputation if somebody had a poor fuse holder put in line with their system and know they had problems there they blame it on the system but by putting already making this done for you and pre-terminating like that guarantees better operation all right what else is in the box um, all right there are tech dragon um, injectors now one thing that companies do that's important that you should know is when you buy an ECU from a specific company, um, if that company manufactures themselves their own injectors, they have a stronger injection profile that works with their ECU. So when you go to calibrate, they support that, and they have a they do more testing um, on their own cal uh, injectors during calibration, so they can make sure that these work the best with their ECUs. Um, I actually personally have owned and installed these on different vehicles. And I can actually guarantee you that the LPG Tech Dragon Red Tops, um, the performance that they have, the smoothness, the response time, and the way they operate when you're driving around is spectacular. Um, you'll you'll feel if you've used other injectors, you'll feel how how well it runs, and um, when you hit the gas, you'll just you'll enjoy it. Um, the other side is their wiring heart diagram. Um, I'll go over this with you. So there's their, their four cylinder module, and then this is their six and their eight cylinder module. And I have some really, really neat things that are gonna separate this from any other ECU in the world that are pretty neat. Um, warranty service and maintenance book. Well, this is pretty cool. So it goes through, and there is uh, places for your mileage and your uh, maintenance you're going to be keeping track of. So this is going to go in your glove box. So if you're an installer company, this is going to be something that you're going to give to your customers just like GM or Ford gives to their customers when they buy their vehicle. Okay, and last and not least, this is something right here. Um, this is supposed to be a picture of a um, Android phone. 
Now, what is neat about this, their software, you can download an app off their website or off of Google Play that is the full uh, interface, programming interface for this system. So what they do is they tell you to download this Gastroid system and um, it interfaces with your cell phone, which I'm not really impressed by that. What I am impressed with that they don't show you or I don't think anybody else understands yet is if you have a double din or a Android um, radio in your vehicle, let's say you've got a GM truck with the, the big face like I have. Um, for right now, instead of you having to use this big bulky laptop, um, let's say you're out of town, you're like two, three hundred miles out of town and you're with your family and you don't bring your laptop with you, you know, um, and you have some kind of weird problem. Let's say your, your buzzer starts buzzing and it's got some weird error detected or you're in a new climate or a new altitude and somewhere that you didn't calibrate your vehicle, something you didn't expect. And, um, you know, you don't want to wait to go home. All you have to do is just turn on your car stereo, go into your Android operating system right there, um, I'll go right into your uh, ECU interface. You can program, change, you can see all your parameters live right there. Nobody else offers that anywhere in the world. And I think that is really, really neat. And guess what? I am going to be replacing my radio with a Google uh, radio. And I will probably do a video about it and show you. Not only did they come out with that program, but there were a couple problems and they fixed them already. So they are updating their software if they notice that there's a problem or a bug. They are actually fixing it instead of just releasing one and then leaving it. What is required for that? I'll show you. It's this Bluetooth module. This will plug into the harness here when it's installed in your vehicle. Um, all of the settings are in there and you leave this plugged in. You don't need to unplug this. Just leave it in your car, um, either in your engine compartment or I'll show you if it's going to be inside of your vehicle. Leave this Bluetooth module that they made plugged in and if you want to do it on your cell phone, do it on your cell phone. If you want to look really cool and do it on your car stereo, there you go. It's already ready to go. You don't have to hook wires up or nothing. So, they offer this. All right. So, let me talk about this map sensor like I was going to tell you. Why is this important to have a temperature sensor built in with the uh, pressure sensor already built in? Why is that important? Because when you buy a rail, either made by Hanna Gold or... Um, let's say either one of the LPG Tech Dragon uh, injectors. If you notice, there are no ports here to install a temperature sensor or a pressure sensor, and you have to have that. Okay, well, you know, this, this is a good injector rail. This is a really good injector rail. Uh, so are their LPG Tech Dragon injectors themselves. Um, but how you normally used to do it is you would buy a T adapter that would go in line. And uh, believe it or not, it does restrict the flow. And you have to make sure that you put it on your dominant bank. Uh, you have two banks on a V8 engine. And you have to make sure that you put it on the one that has more of the gas flow. That way they balance out. Well, when you put this in, you don't have to worry about that. Not only that, but the install is cleaner because you don't have uh, an electrical line and a fuel hose line. And then you got this bulky crap in there. It actually looks extremely clean. I like that. That's why I like that. So that gives you the freedom and the availability to go out and buy a HANA single injector or these guys do offer singles now. I haven't seen it on their website, but they, I do know they have them. They've got a lot of cool injectors. And so that gives you the freedom to just choose whatever kind of injector you want. All right, what else did I like here? Um, so just so you know, I actually didn't just open this box and show it to you right now. Uh, this ECU, I actually have already installed, used, calibrated, and programmed on my truck outside in the garage right now. Um, so I am going to give you an honest opinion of it. Something that's really, really cool that 
I do want to tell people that a lot of people aren't going to know yet. This controller, if you notice, looks pretty similar to a lot of stuff that you see on eBay. Um, if you have bought an AC Augas knockoff ECU, and I'm saying uh, people, a lot of people don't understand they're buying a Chinese computer and a Chinese um, copy of the original AC Autogas system. Now, I worked with the company trying to figure out why their system didn't work very well, and I, I absolutely tried my ass off trying to figure out how to make that system work correctly and work good for everybody. And I'll honestly tell you, I do know the history of this, so if somebody's watching this and they say, well, we, you know, you're an idiot because the person who created the AC Autogas system created this one. Well, there's a big story behind that that separates LPG Tech from AC Autogas. Um, and it, it's, it's really cool that there's a reason why I bought this specifically. And so what my point is right now is if you bought a kit from my CNG guy, one of those old kits, or you bought a kit from EWS, or you bought a Chinese kit from somebody and you think it's an AC Autogas, it's not. Unless it has the original AC Autogas logo back there and you have the certification on it, it's not an AC Autogas. It's a Chinese copy. The software is not compatible with the AC Autogas software, even though you think it's interfacing correctly. It doesn't. Um, so, why do I bring that up? This controller is directly compatible with that harness, and I tested it, and I've already calibrated it and everything. Um, so, if you have one of those systems, you can buy this, and if you want to try it out, you don't have to hook up this harness yet. Um, you can just Plug this in, use the advanced LPG Tech software, and tune it and calibrate it. If you love it, which I absolutely guarantee you are, you're going to go right back outside and you're going to rip that crappy piece of crap harness off and you're going to put that one on and you're going to put that sensor on. Um, you'll absolutely love it. It's totally different. So what happened? Why, why is this similar to the AC gas system? Well, the original design and basically the inventor of the AC Autogas system, the original engineer who wrote the software, the control algorithm, the electronics inside of this ECU, he actually was the, the person who owns this company now and created and designed this one, was the original person with AC Autogas. He started that in 2002 and um, left them in, I think it was 2009 or 2010, and started up his own company. And I don't personally know why, but I've, I've got a pretty good idea. Most of the people who create these systems, uh, the, the main companies, whether it's Polish, Italian, or Argentinian, they are very, very, very um, stubborn on what they, are, what they do, the way their control algorithms work, the way they learn, their settings and parameters, the way their harness is. They're very stubborn. They will not change. AC Autogas has not changed since 2002, since their original program. They've modified and updated to some features, but the control rhythm that learns and adapts and builds the map has not changed since 2002. Um, if I'm wrong, I've actually used all the software since then. Um, and it's very difficult to calibrate it. Um, the only injectors that I've seen that work are only two, and that is the HANA um, or the ACW01, which is uh, not a very reliable rail. But they're the only two that actually calibrate where you can have repeated results. If you use any other injector with the AC Autogas system, it won't work. It will be, from one day to the next, it will be a completely different operating condition, it it dies in intersections for no reason. I mean, you, you work your butt off trying to figure it out. Um, it's not going to be an EPA system ever in the United States. It absolutely will not. Um, there's some people trying, and they're just going to flip and kill themselves trying to figure it out. Um, for that reason, for the amount of work that I've dedicated to AC Autogas trying to get them to work, um, I I was very, very hesitant in going with LPG Tech. I know the owner, the he's the president. I know him, not personally, but I, I know who he is and I've followed him for many years. And knowing that, I, 
was very, very hesitant to buy this, hoping that, uh, or worried that he's going to use the exact same control algorithm that he created back then and, and use the same type of um, uh, setup where it's damn near impossible for you to figure it out ever. I was really, really worried about that. It took me about a month before I finally bought this. And um, I am proud to say that I bought the very first one in the United States. As soon as it hit, I did have the inside scoop on it. As soon as it hit the, uh, the website, I bought it. And uh, it took me, I bought a whole bunch of other stuff, but it took me, uh, it took them four days to get it to me, which isn't bad coming from Europe. Um, so, um, right now I'm going to go through the uh, features that this has. What separates this is this is a fully OBD2 compliant ECU controller. And inside of it is the OBD2 adapter that adapts to your vehicle. That is not possible with the AC auto gas system. You have to have an external adapter to get that function. And the OBD2 function is extremely important. That's what's going to make this different from everything else. And um, they have this new algorithm called the tech algorithm, which absolutely makes everything so easy on programming. I've already used it. I've already done it. Um, so one thing that you should know, though, um, coming through here, this is the manual. Uh, the one problem that I did have that I'm not too happy about, it's actually the only problem, but I wish I would have known this in the, in the beginning. Um, they have their instructions of how to um, adapt your vehicle. Now you have two wires, a can high and a can low. Um, the problem is, is these protocols only support these two lines. <sighs> over there in Europe, this may work perfect, but over here in the United States, um, we have a protocol called the JPW1850, or the J1850, PW and VPW. Okay, those two protocols are not a can. You have to buy this adapter that I have to talk to them about and see if I can get. And this it's called the Tech OBD scanner. And it actually plugs directly into your OBD socket outside of outside on this harness here. And then you're going to attach your Bluetooth or your cable here. Um, and this is going to be inside the vehicle. So um, so I do want to warn you, make sure that you, if you have a uh, that protocol, uh, J, they tell you right here, uh, J1850 VPW and J1850 VP or PWM, the scanner tech OBD has to be used. I didn't know that at the time. So that is extremely important because when you're calibrating, it links to your vehicle different than any other ECU system out there. When you're calibrating, it actually doesn't you don't touch it anymore. Um, it does everything and learns everything constantly about your vehicle. And there are four settings that you can use as far as speeds and how it works. And um, man, it calibrates wonderfully. All you're going to do is to fine tune it. It has some control algorithms that show you a, a graph at the bottom. And you just use these little sliders. And all the instructions are right here in their manual that will tell you how to make it better or worse. It's really, really easy to have perfection. Um, that is very, very important with a natural gas system, especially with companies who want to do an EPA certified kit. Um, this system right here is the only system that I've seen that will give you the absolute perfect results that you're going to need to pass EPA. Um, if you're doing it as a personal level like me, and you're not going to do an EPA kit, I actually make sure that all of the installs that I do, I don't just want to run on natural gas. I don't just want to save money. I want to make sure that my vehicle is staying in line with those specifications set forth by the, the EPA. The reason why is because not only is it good for our environment, but it, they set that and those standards are kept to make your vehicle run at absolute maximum efficiency. It's going to make you burn every drop of fuel that you put in there, which is going to save you more money. And it's going to make your engine last longer, which will save you thousands of dollars. 
So when you use a system and you utilize all of this brand new technology that has just came out as of Monday, then you're going to have your a longer lasting engine, a less stressed natural gas system, um, a safer system. So you could give your keys to anybody, any family member, any kind of friend. You can get in and you, you're going to look good. Um, you can have results as good or better than what a factory OEM can do. Um, can, because you can tailor your system specifically for the climate that you have. You can choose the injectors that are perfect for your climate. When you want to change them, you're not going to be spending thousands of dollars at the dealership and hoping to God it works. Um, so that, that's my rant on that. So um, some other products that I purchased go in this truck. Um, let's see, I'll go over this right here. This is, a, this is something that has taken me a little bit of time to get. Customs has denied me a couple times on this. Um, this is, I'm very, very, very firm believer on a lubrication system. Uh, not to save your valves. Um, I I put I put nine hundred thousand miles plus on my engines, and I rebuilt six of them in that time. And every single one of them, I have specifically pulled the valves apart and pulled the heads out, um, pulled the the keepers on the this valve springs, pulled the springs out, dropped the valve out, and I have done comparisons on a normal fuel and my natural gas and I don't have valve problems like people try to scare you about so the one thing is though is when you switch from a petroleum fuel which is a liquid to a natural gas or a propane it's a dry fuel and your gasoline leaves massive deposits and in carbon in, inside of your valves and your intake and when you switch to a dry fuel, that stuff does not just go away. It stays there. Okay? That's why I advocate these, because you need something to absolutely lubricate it, because natural gas is a dry fuel. But also to get rid of that carbon buildup that's been building up when you were running on gasoline, which you're going to. Gasoline is a really crappy fuel. It sucks. I hate gasoline. The properties, everything about gasoline sucks. And diesel hate those two fuels. Um, I love natural gas as a fuel. I've always loved it. I've been running natural gas for 14 years and it's my favorite fuel. It's a pain in the ass, um, but it may be creating a better future for me. Um, I'm beginning to be respected enough that people are listening to my advice of my 900,000 miles worth of experience with it. This is a really cool lubricator. Look how small this is. Look how compact. So this can fit inside your engine compartment. Uh, there's an adjusting valve here, and you're going to see some drips drip down through here, going into this hose that's going to go to a nozzle that is supplied um, that will go into your intake. Now, the important thing is this nozzle is tiny. It is calibrated. It, this has to be installed. You can't do it any other way because you'll get too much vacuum, and it will suck too much out of this. So they give you everything that you need. They give you the hose, the, the valve, and the lubricator. They also throw in this free bottle of V-Lube, which over there in Europe is really popular, but it, this isn't available here in the United States, and we live in the United States. So you can go to lpgshop.co.uk and you can order this, but in an emergency, if you need to use something, Marvel Mystery, Marvel Mystery Oil will go in here. So. All you're going to do is open that up, use a funnel, fill this up. You can see right through the whole bottle, so when you start to get low, you'll know instantly. There are some oilers on eBay. They are really expensive, and they are pieces of shit. I have it in my truck right now, and the damn thing leaks all over. And the adjustment screw that's on there it either puts too much oil in there or not enough. So when I go to fill, uh, start the truck in the morning, it smokes like a beast. If I turn it down too much, then it's not enough. Um, there are two versions of this on their website on lpgshop.co.uk. They have an electronic version, which is a little bit more expensive, but it actually electronically, based on some settings, some, like your throttle position sensor, 
it will actually electronically feed it, which is more accurate than this. But this is cheaper, it was uh, 40, 45 bucks. That's pretty damn good price for guaranteed protection on your engine. So I love these things. I wanted to go over this with people as well. Because everything you see on this table is being installed on the, my truck right as of today. Um, also, something else that I have purchased was these Pulsar spark plugs. And they actually had a really, really, really bad reputation when they first came out. And um, I'll go over them with you. Okay, so this is their brand new product line. They just released this as well. Now this was actually a spark plug, this was their first one, it was called an AD1P or I. And it either came in iridium or, um, uh, I keep thinking of plasma, but it was uh, platinum. Whether you had the uh, original platinum or iridium, this spark plug did not last more than 50,000 miles. And if you get on Amazon, this plug has an absolute horrible reputation. I did do, I did buy a couple sets for my vehicles, and I did not have the problems that other people complained about. Um, however, when I did remove them from my truck, I had a 92 CNG vehicle, and I installed these AD1Ps in that, and or no, it was a it was a different one, but it was still a pull start. When I removed it, you could see where the capacitor was, and it was burned up inside of there. So, yeah, I only got 50,000 miles out of it. What makes a Pulsar plug, why am I even telling you about a Pulsar plug? Natural gas or propane is a lean burn fuel, and when fuel, when you have a lean burn situation, it becomes more difficult to bridge the gap between your electrode and your ground strap on your spark plug. So one of the problems is, is when you convert your vehicle to natural gas or propane, one of the most important things is making sure that your ignition system is powerful, new, and tuned. That's why I advocate when you do a new system, you must make sure that your plugs are brand new and your wires. A poor ignition system will completely negate all the work that you're doing in integrating a very nice system into your vehicle. Um, Polestar plugs are, they claim that this has, let me read it from their paper, 5 million watts of plasma forming peak power. Released by our patented capacitor located in the core of the Pulsar plug and creates a larger spark, eliminating spark jitter by pre-sensitizing the fuel mixture with plasma to ensure ignition. I do have a video comparing the differences between their old original plug that is no longer available, due to obvious reasons they admitted it, with their new plasma core spark plug. Now, if I get the same results that I got with that one, but with a long, longer longevity, then this is going to be a really super good product. Now, they admitted their product only lasted 50,000 miles, and they claim to get over 100,000 miles with these. I don't know that yet. I can't stand by that. But the power and performance that I did get out of that plug when it lasted was spectacular and worth it. I have a video on my own YouTube channel that shows how powerful this is. So you have really three options. You can either, if you want to use your stock ignition system, then you're going to need to choose a Pulsar plug, which is basically like an MSD. It gives you a really powerful spark. Uh, not a hotter spark, that's different. Um, you, you, don't get, you, you don't use a hotter spark. Uh, you don't use heat to ignite it. You use electrical current. Uh, the heat here is absorbed by the insulator. Um, so you can either use this. Um, there is a spark plug made by Brisk. And I got onto jegsonline.com, and I was absolutely astonished by what they offer for the CNG and LPG market. I watched, probably six, seven years ago, I watched a, 
I read a presentation from um, a, a set of students, and I can't remember if it was MIT, but it was a really, really um, popular school for engineering and creating very neat things. And they created a spark plug that made absolute mechanical sense. They created a spark plug that had four electrode tips on the outside. Not, I'm not talking about the stupid Bosch plus four piece of crap. I'm not talking about that. They created one with an electro tip that was massive in the center. And what it would do is the open face design of that was not obstructed by the electrical current going from the center to the sides. Their theory was when your piston comes up and the fuel quench is coming up, instead of the fuel coming around this ground strap having to go through there and hopefully igniting, um, with the open face design, when the fuel comes up, when that spark comes through, there's nothing obstructing it and you'll get your ignition faster, more complete, and more reliable because the side electrodes, if one, God forbid, didn't ground out better than another one, there were still three others that it would arc to. So having that exposed surface um, uh, is what made that, uh, oh, they were trying to engineer a spark plug to ignite lean burn. That was what their project was, was lean burn technology. It wasn't specifically natural gas back then. It was lean burn technology. People were experimenting with lean burn, introducing hydrogen kits and stuff. Uh, that's what it was originally designed. And they were hoping that their design would be picked up by some big company or somebody, and they would like their idea. I totally forgot about that. And when I was looking on JEGS online for this Polestar plug, I came across a plug called the Brisk, uh, or a plug company called Brisk. And I know that they're huge over there in Europe, all over Europe and Australia. Brisk is a massive company. And the people who actually picked up that design, maybe I'm wrong, but... I remember reading that a long time ago, and it's been so long ago, um, I can't name names. But they picked up Brisk and Lamborghini Motor Company picked up that idea. So Brisk and Lamborghini both created and perfected that design and is now standard in Lamborghinis. Okay, so they loved it so much, and the idea was so perfect. The problem is that plug is $22.50. This one's... Uh, I think this one was 15 bucks a piece. And there are a whole bunch of other ones on JEGS. Not on Summit Racing, though. Only on JEGS. I don't know why. But go on to JEGSonline.com and scroll down to the bottom and look at all these, all of the new spark plugs that are coming out. They're not the same crappy design they had back in the 50s. That's my rant on that. Um, also, you know, something that I'm really big on is this LPG Tech Perfect Blue Filter. I actually bought another one. Inside of here, you have your filter, you have your cup that collects the oil. My biggest complaint on CNG systems is this dang oil goes up through the filter, through the system. And I'm actually uh, kind of upset at myself right now because what I've been telling everybody is to make sure you filter this oil out and dump it out. I had an injector failure on my van, and uh, yeah, my system froze up. I do have fuel heaters on the lines. I got the most crazy kind of things you can think of trying to heat the fuel up getting into the injectors. I was absolutely amazed when I pulled this filter off, and it was completely freaking full of oil. And that was only one week. And I'm using brand new state-of-the-art CNG systems. Um, people argue with me all the time, now nah, these guys that own these systems, these uh, gas stations say that they don't have any kind of oil blow-by or any kind of oil going through their system. Bull crap. I have not filled my either one of my vehicles up one time at an old station. They've all been one-year-old stations, state-of-the-art. So this filter, I'm actually going to tell you, every single 1,500 miles, make sure you just take this off, drain it out. And believe it or not, this damn thing is dirty as hell. I got like rock, it looks like rocks and stuff inside of there. And my regulator has a pre-screen filter on it, a um, coalescent filter. 
I don't know how the heck I'm getting this nasty dirt stuff through here in this cup. Um, this is an actually absolutely fantastic product. I don't, I have not seen anything else that competes with this design. Um, so this is law. You put this on your system, especially if you're running a performance injector like that Hannah. Um, where was it? These filters. These filters here. I did advocate in another one of my review videos about this type of filter. This filter is exactly the same type of media that's in that one. Now, I did tell you, um, if you watched that video, that this filter, if it filtered, if it, if the oil level reaches this line here, it's going to be forced through. And it's absolutely true. I cut one of these open that I use for 10,000 miles. Yeah, 20,000 miles. I got 20, I put 20,000 miles on, on one of these filters. And I cut it open and opened it up and there was no damn oil in there. That's why I neglected that. Because I thought, well, there's not that much oil in there. The filter media all the way around was completely saturated in oil, which was telling me that it was there was oil in it, was doing its job. It was pretty damn clean. I was pretty surprised, and I thought, man, maybe I'm an idiot in my videos. Maybe I'm an asshole and I'm telling people bad advice. And so because of the amount of oil that I saw in there, it was facing down, okay? There was a little bit of oil right here, um, but it, yes, it was facing down. And it was facing the right way. And um, so I was really kind of doubting myself. So I didn't think I had that much oil in my system. And I literally only went 1,500 miles. It was one week worth of my driving. I drive 420 miles a week, five days. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I was going to start doing this interval about every 3,500 miles. And when I pulled the uh, filter, well, I started having misfires like crazy. And I have a leak down on one of my injectors. I have two of them now. And I pulled this apart, and I know what's causing the injectors to fail. Oil. When they freeze up, the oil freezes, and it wears them out like no other. I opened this thing up, ding, thing was full of oil. Um, so that proves to me right there that that's why all these other injectors that I've been uh, that have been failing on me have been because of the oil getting through here and freezing. So this filter is fifteen dollars, absolutely a beautiful filter worth every single penny. Don't do a CNG conversion or anything unless you have this filter right here. Strong, durable, thick plastic, buy this. You can buy it at lpgshop.co.uk. You can get it here in two days. Shipping costs are reasonable. Um, I'm going to go through some uh, software with you right now. Hopefully this is still recording. Okay, so LPG Tech does not pay me or endorse me or do anything with me, but um, I'm going to show you what their system software is capable of and how I liked it. So hopefully my, you'll be able to see my settings here. So let's open up the program. If I know I don't have it connected. Alright, so what I did was I didn't I didn't do a really good calibration on it. Um, it's not really set up very well. Uh, let's see if I saved it. No, I didn't save it. Okay, so since I'm not attached to the vehicle, it's not bringing up the map that I created. Uh, that's too bad. What I wanted to show you was... I'll go through the basic settings with this software and hopefully you'll understand and believe me of how nice this is. One thing that I've been trying to work on for many, many years is um, there are a couple different systems that I solely endorse. Um, I love uh, AEB products. I definitely love them. Uh, you can see all the software versions that I have, um, whether it's the Digitronic, AEB themselves, Gas Italy. Um, who else is on here? Energy Reform, OMVL Dream, Green Gas, Bygas, uh, and King. 
those are all AEB systems. And you see I have all their software because I install them and I use them and I maintain them. Uh, they are very, very easy to use. Um, another system that is pretty close to LPG Tech is the KME. Uh, this one here, KME, is a really, really nice one. If you have that, that's really nice. Um, and then there is the Oscar NSAS. It is a uh, little tiny little computer. I mean, it's it's just tiny. It's like that big. And um, so far, as far as feature rich, uh, the Europe Gas and this LPG Tech are the two that I would absolutely like as far as the um, the features what they have inside of their features. Now, what LPG Tech did is when the um, when the creator and designer, when he started this company, there have been things missing in every single ECU out there. There is always something missing in the software. And if you, I've always wanted somebody to put everything that was neat and made that ECU or that program or that company different and special. If somebody just took all of the things that were cool with all the systems, put them in one, that would be the best system. I've been watching every single company. I watch them. I watch all their updates. And I use them. As soon as they came out with this one, I started watching it. And wondering how they were going to do their controlled algorithm. And boy, it is nice. So this person went out, started his own company, and he did include everything that you need to have and you should have had in the beginning 14 years ago and made a perfect system. So far, every single feature that you see on here operates. If you click on it, it will work. That is one of my big, huge complaints with some systems that somebody, some people make. Um, every single system that I've used have features that don't work, and they should. So far, this one, uh, with my testing, everything has worked exactly the way I've set it up. Um, now, two things differentiate a your systems where you get them. All Italian ECU systems do not natively work with um, Hemi engines, and I'll show you why. Uh, all of the Polish systems that I have installed, used, natively built into the ECU can detect the positive injection and operate. That's, that's one thing that's important to remember is on a Polish system. So, so far there are only two Polish systems that I would even consider if you're thinking about buying a uh, ECU system and that is the Europe Gas. Um, they use the Oscar N SAS. It is a little bitty tiny computer. This one will natively support Hemis and all OBD protocols built in and the LPG Tech system. The, those are the only two if you have a Hemi that I would um, that work natively. AEB does work but you have to install something. Um, so right here I hope you can see this. So right here you have your standard engine type was which is basically Chevrolet, Ford, Dodge. You have a turbocharged option, Valvetronic, which is the Mercedes. I haven't personally seen any of them here in the United States. And the Wankel engine. Uh, what is Wankel? That is a Mazda RX-8. And can it be converted? Yes, it can. Uh, this There's actually one of the owners of this company. He converted a Wankel engine because it is a, you know, you may think, ah, oh, that's a stupid car to convert. But it's, it's to prove that this system can work with that. How many cylinders? You know what makes this system really cool? Based off of um, any other system out there in the world. I will hopefully be able to show you this real quick. Expandability. One of the things that I've been asked quite a bit is, can you convert a V10 engine? And yes, it's possible with a sequential system, but the amount of money that it costs and um, 
the amount of work that goes into it, yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt to program the two computers. So I'm going to show you how you can make a 16-cylinder fuel-injected system using this product from LPG Tech. Yeah, i got to see if I can find where they have that cable. Here's the Bluetech wireless interface I was talking about that is optional. Uh, let's, uh, let's see how much it is. U.S. $90 U.S. And is it worth it? Yes, I love it. Some people don't like the wireless, but I do. Bear with me, i got to find this thing to show you. It's pretty neat. Nobody else does this. There it is. It's called the LPG Tech Multi-Tech Controllers Link. What does this do? You see that there? It links the, you buy two, you have to buy two eight-cylinder ECUs, but you link the two together, or you, I guess you can buy two six-cylinders, um, but you link the two computers together through their uh, port where this, um, where you would normally connect your diagnostic cable. So you connect these two together, and inside of the software, look, it's only 41 bucks too. Oh, there's a picture right there. Let me bring that picture up. So you're going to use two computers side by side, and they're going to link together through this adapter cable, which is only 50 bucks. And then you only use one cable to connect to your LPG Tech software. So that completely eliminates um, the pain of trying to sync the two computers together. So look at this. You can do a 10, 12, 16 cylinder natural gas system. How cool is that? Nobody else can do that or offers that. Uh, where do you do that? Um, you come back here and you can select your computer and go master or slave with one wire, one software. That's it. All your program and your settings are all going to be right there. Okay, That's one thing that differentiates this ECU specifically. So not only is it the latest and the greatest so far and the most feature rich, but it has much more versatility than anybody else can offer. I'll drop that back down. Okay, so yeah, you have all that. You Your number of cylinders per coil. I actually took that clear up to 48, so there's I, I don't even know when that stops. Uh, number of cylinders as well. You can change the heck out of that. Your petrol injection type, sequential, semi-sequential, and full group. Um, now, this is your Hemi right there. So you want to go, ah, I got a Hemi. How does it work? Right there. Petrol injection is controlled by the positive. Through, uh, on the Hemis, the computer actually sends a positive pulse through the injector, and then the injector is granted throughout multiple points on the engine. Every single other vehicle that I have ever seen, the ground is going through the computer and it just shorts the ground out on the injector. Okay, so that, look at that right there. I got a Hemi. Renix control, that is old Jeeps. I have never seen that. I don't know. I, I don't even know where the hell that is. I've never even had anybody call that would have a vehicle that runs, uses Renix control. Um, so you can choose your CNG or LPG on here. Now, this is why I recommend making sure that you connect this to your OBD2 port. They have two different types of control algorithms, standard and tech. The difference between the two is standard is the old type of where it watches your petroleum injectors, watches their numbers, then when it switches over to natural gas, then it tries to get that number to go back down to the correct level, and then it creates a map. All right, That's kind of dumb. It's old school. But it, the option is here. Tech, that is with the OBD2 port, or, or your uh, OBD2 connection. So this uses everything that your vehicle is doing and then configures a controlled algorithm in your map based off that, which is better. Nobody else offers that so far that I've seen with this level of programming. Uh, your gas injectors, look at the selection that you have. Uh, one of the... I, I recommend a, just a couple types of injectors. So here's your AEB INJ R4. Uh, that is available through Digitronic and your retailer here in Utah. That's a very, very good injector uh, that I recommend. You also have your HANA 2000 and 2100. 
and your 1.9. These are sitting on my table. These are what's going to be installed. So look, you got your high flow and then your normal flow, your gold right there or green. Uh, OMVL RegFast. That's a very dur durable injector. Uh, you have your Dragon BF High Flow and your BF Dragon, or your just your Dragon. Uh, I don't recommend any of those. Uh, no, 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 no. no. I really don't recommend any others. Just these are either the Dragons or the Hanna OMVL or AAB. That's all I would recommend. Uh, adaptation. You can either do it off of the map or your OBD port, which is better. Um, but the amount of features and options, look at all your temperature sensors you have. So let's say, God, you just can't find any. Who cares? It's going to be in this program so you can use it. Same thing with your gas temp sensor. Now, do you see these little stars? This is why they give you uh, their own sensor because this is the reducer. That's what it is. You don't even have to worry about it. It's already there. Gas temp sensor, it's already there. Uh, now your gas level sensor this is pretty important because you got propane and CNG sensors and they're different. Um, here you go. Uh, your AEB 806, this is uh, what you're going to get when you buy a premium natural gas system. These guys make, I really haven't seen anybody that makes a better sensor than that. Lovato CNG, I have no idea what that is. I've never seen that one before. Um, switch over sound, it makes a little beep, nice little beep. Um, Let's see. Okay, so what separates this from some of the other systems? And I did play with this. I liked it. Switchover mode, one by one. Okay. One of the most difficult points when you have a natural gas system is the switchover. Um, you, sometimes you can have a pretty rough switchover, uh, depending on your pressure and your calibration on your, your nozzles. If you're, you're off or your pressure is too high, it can be kind of rough. So switchover mode one by one, it will slowly turn on, starting with this one all the way down, just nice and slow. But you can change how fast it is here, and also with in RPM increments. Uh, so it's totally programmable. Now one to three, and two and four. One to three and two and four. Uh, this is actually one that I like because it's reliable. Uh, one and three switch on, and two and four switch on at the same time, and then the rest of them follow, which is. I would say for durability reasons, that one's the one I would choose. All at once is a pretty clean freaking transmission. I love that. It, when it was all at once on my truck, it just, and it ran. You couldn't even tell. Fast start. This is going to start on these two situations if your temperature is correct. Uh, you can start on CNG if you want, if it is correct. Acceler uh, switch at RPM or ignition switch, or you don't have to have it on at all. Fuel overlapping, this is one thing that was missing with AC Auto Gas. This was important. Um, when you switch fuels, if it's still kind of rough and you've cho chosen one of these algorithms over here, let's say you're a little bit too lean when it switches over. You can actually increase your injection fuel overlap so you don't have that problem, which can actually throw your injection times off and throw your fuel trims off and raise them. So to fix that, you can come over here and you can completely... Wow, four milliseconds, that's pretty high. Five milliseconds, that's badass. I mean, but if you need that much injection, your system's way bad. But it's there. Injector heating, this is for people who live in Utah or anywhere north. Um, this will operate your injectors before you try to operate them. That way that they are warmed up enough that the oil is circulated. It just slowly pulses really, really slow. Um, I, I've used that before. Um, let's see what else is really cool. Fast switch off. I didn't play with that one. RPM dropout time. Maximum gas RPM and minimum gas RPM. Those are pretty important features that you can use too. So calibration. When you choose the tech calibration, this is just so freaking cool. So you come in here and you're going to verify what you have. This is just a final step before you make sure. So you can choose standard or tech. I just choose tech. And then your fuel. And then you make sure you chose your correct injectors. And believe it or not, they work. The settings actually work. Um, if you're going to choose the um, standard option here, you have to program these in. And you just look over here and see what it is. And then you start it. And there are some features where you, and I did play with this, uh, settings checking. This will verify your settings and make sure that what you chose in the computer is going to match your vehicle. It does check it. Connection test. 
Uh, injectors all at the same time. If you have a problem, switch and fuel. Um, when it does the calibration, you can use that. And then without pressure control, you can choose it so the program does not do the pressure calibration. When it's done, it goes through this setting. I, I believe it was 10 steps. It doesn't just have a line that goes do 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 do. It actually had steps, and it verified those steps. And I actually messed around with it to try to screw it up. And if your settings are wrong, like if your injection, your nozzles are too small, it will go through. It will go through three times, and if it fails on the third time, and your settings over here are still screwed up, it will tell you what to fix, why it failed, and how to fix it. Okay, it just does it all for you. That's what I liked. Now, then you get out of here and you're done. When you come over here to the map, I'm not going to get it really into this because I'm going to, I'm going to wait for my OBD adapter to come up. But when I was playing with this, you're basically going to have to drive your butt off on gasoline. And the reason why is because you want to have a complete map. And it learns everything you're doing with your vehicle. Um, there are a lot of features in here. <coughs> when you're using the tech feature, this has these little drift calibrators right here. And it'll tell you... I'll, I'll do a really good video about this, but basically... If you're out of calibration, there's going to be a drop-down bar down here that shows rich and lean. And if they're really lean, you know, and they drop down to a certain point, you're going to, you, you need to fix that. Either your pressure's off or your, um, your nozzles are not correct. But if it's pretty steady and pretty clean, then you're just going to use these drift calibrators. That's it. That's how you adjust it. And the green here is the, this is their maximum allowed for absolute perfection. Outside of that range, you're going to, it's not going to run right. So that's it. That's how easy it is to fix it. That's how easy it is to adjust it. Um, your OBD is going to sit here and you're going to, these, you can't really adjust these until you develop the map. It won't let you. But um, there are so many different options to just fine tune it. And that is what is not available on everybody else's systems. Everybody else's systems, you have to sit there with your scanner, watch your field trims, and watch the little dot that it is in the table. Let me see if I can do the table. Right there. You're just going to watch the number, and then you're going to click in, oh, we're in that box we're lean by that much, and you add that percentage. This one, it mostly takes care of itself, and then when it's done doing what it does, as long as everything is correct, then you're just going to move these a little bit, and watch it and it'll tell you it builds these little color screens and then it tells you um, where was it? it tells you a percentage where was that 2d map it'll tell you a percentage of how far you're off in different areas and believe it or not it actually tells you what to f how to fix it so um, I really like this so far so far this was really really nice I really like this system so far um, I don't have any complaints at it with it at all um, I highly recommend this um, I will be putting some miles on it and beating the absolute crap out of it and I will give you an honest opinion of what I think with it but as of right now I have not been able to get my AC auto gas to calibrate correctly my nozzles I know are damn right and because I've done enough of these Chevrolet trucks with AEB systems and I can calibrate the AEB system absolutely 100% flawlessly but yet I put a stag system on the same damn truck and I can't do it bull crap I put this one on and I didn't think it was gonna run very well but um, because I, I don't have experience with it but my very first try it worked first try got out on the road the map started building I understood it um, I thought it was going to be a lot more difficult than it was, and it's not. So I'm, I am very happy with it so far. I'm going to go install the entire complete system right now, and uh, I am happy to say that um, everything underneath the hood of my truck has been purchased and bought by me from lpgshop.co.uk. And I'll go to their website for you in case you haven't seen that yet. Look at that, it pops right up. This is a really, really, really excellent site. And he is developing, Jack is developing the CNG for cars section. Uh, 
every single day that I get on here there's a new product or an update or something sold out. Uh, this bygas regulator, I'm actually out of full testing and development on the Tomasito AT12 HP reducer. Um, I'm not going to recommend the Tomasito reducer to any kind of commercial or heavy duty application. It absolutely will not work. This reducer right here, I actually tested pulling my 10,000 pound trailer with a 45 mile per hour sustained headwind with a minus 30 degree below zero ambient temperature on my grill. Inside of my engine compartment, my temperature was 20 degrees Fahrenheit. This regulator put out a constant flow, no less than two bar at 4,000 RPM, sustained for five minutes. Uh, that output temperature did not get, uh, this temperature right here at my rails was 20 Celsius, did not go under 20 Celsius under that whole duration. The temperature on the reducer at this port right here, which is an open coolant port on these, uh, that temperature was sustained at 60 Celsius and did not drop. The regulator is not covered the line coming from here to the filter was not protected or covered. This was an open line, which you shouldn't be doing. Um, so there was no protection of heat loss. Uh, you get a 5% degradation of heat loss per foot. So even though that this was exposed like that, my rail temperature and the temperature sensor was on the rail on the driver's side. This is mounted on the passenger. This regulator maintained that pressure, that um, it maintained its operational pressure and it also maintained the temperature of the fuel rail and the regulator. The Tomasito regulator cannot do that. Um, my rail temperature on my vehicle, no matter what I do to it, whether I cover this or put fuel heaters in, I cannot get the damn temperature on my rail to go to above zero Celsius at 2000 RPM. Um, which, as soon as this is in stock, I believe on Wednesday of this next upcoming week I will be buying that and replacing that on my van. Uh, the only drawback on this regulator is the pressures that as far as what I can understand is not adjustable and um, that's it. Yeah it's just not adjustable. So this is absolutely my number one pick right now. Um, I'm it, it is made by Bygas Italy, which they do make um, a complete ECU line, which um, I do apologize to some of my people that um, either have that system or sell that system. I'm sorry. But so far, because of the size of this regulator, it's only as big as what fits in your hand. Um, this regulator here um, is my number one pick. It, it, the heat, the way that the heat travels through this regulator is able to keep it because of its size is able to keep the whole regulator hot which keeps fuel hot which makes your injectors last a lot longer I don't have any injector fails failures but with my AT12 Super um, I can't keep the injectors in my vehicle so I'm flipping done I'm done with that that Tomasito regulator and uh, as far as the price on this one here this is an AT12 this is rate, rated for 250 horsepower honestly I wouldn't put this on anything um, I would just use their Super on everything. Yeah, it's rated for 400 horsepower, but I would still put that one on a four-cylinder. It's just too much. These injectors are just too nice to risk cooling off. Um, an injector that I would recommend, if you have anything over 340 horsepower, this, this is just a gosh damn excellent deal. These are individual Hanna Golds, which is the new standard they're coming out with. And um, look, you have the distribution rail. And then you have the injector. This injector can be mounted on the injector, uh, on the nozzle port itself going into your engine. Now check this out. This is really cool what he offers. You can buy this. This is the only place I've seen this. You can actually buy it based on your horsepower. So uh, with no nozzle that this injector that I own right there, um, this one can support 33 to 50 horsepower per cylinder. Um, with that with no nozzle but if you have anything less that gold will work even down to 15 to 24 horsepower per cylinder you can have absolute perfection beyond what any kind of factory can offer if you buy this rail in this configuration the price is fantastic you'll get this in two days I'm not joking um, so those are my picks 
Uh, that's, that's what I'm doing so far. So the next time you see a video with me, it'll be my com truck completed with everything LPG Tech um, right now. So um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like the video that I made. All right, bye.